During President Biden's address to the nation on Tuesday afternoon, which was the first time since American troops fully withdrew from Afghanistan, the president again blamed his predecessor, former President Donald Trump, for some of the chaos that unfolded during the withdrawal. Despite previous criticism from both Republicans and Democrats, the president pivoted to this on Tuesday. My predecessor, the former president, signed an agreement with the Taliban to remove U.S. troops by May the 1st, just months after I was inaugurated. It included no requirement that the Taliban work out a cooperative governing arrangement, the Taliban work out a cooperative governing arrangement with the Afghan government. But it did authorize the release of 5,000 prisoners last year, including some of the Taliban's top war commanders, among those who just took control of Afghanistan. By the time I came to office, the Taliban was in its strongest military position since 2001, controlling or contesting nearly, controlling or contesting nearly half of the country. Ken, I'd love to get your thoughts on, on what uh, Biden just said. Well, first of all, I have to say, I'm kind of glad that Joe Biden came on the offense. I think uh, I'm a little surprised. He's uh, typically a little more soft-spoken than that. He certainly doesn't go on the defense like that. But he's right. I mean, what he said was absolutely true. Uh, uh, Trump and Pompeo negotiated this deal, and the May 1st deadline was untenable. And the, the release of Taliban prisoners who part, who part were the ones who took over Kabul. So I think he's right. I'm glad he went on the offense. Donald Trump was certainly making hay, pointing out to him that the, this is the worst foreign policy disaster in the history of the United States, hyperbola on both sides. But I agree with him. I think he's right. And I'm glad he said it. I think I think it had to be said. But then again, I don't like deflection either. Joe Biden still has to take responsibility for not fully understanding how quickly the Taliban would take over the country. That was on him, and that was a lack of him listening to his own intelligence community. So that's on him. Joe, uh, Ken seems to think that this is <laughs> offensive rather than defensive. Have any thoughts there? I respect Ken's opinion, and I think it's very insightful. I never thought about it in that context. But I will say this. President Trump, he made that agreement under the context that we would continue to have strong leadership. Now, Joe Biden could place the blame on whoever he wants to, but at the end of the day, one thing that America has to understand, Joe Biden is the president right now. And so just like he came through and erased everything else President Trump did that could have benefited our country, he could have erased that deal, too. That was something that he did not have to stick to. But let me also say this. Let's give major kudos to House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy for ensuring that Democrats and Republicans in the House can come together to ensure that somebody's going to be held accountable for what's going on. And the minority whip, Steve Scalise, getting every single member of Congress who have served in the military to give their input on strategies on how we could have prevented what happened. And also Congress, Congressman Byron Donalds for setting up in the House and ensuring that while everybody else is focused on what's going on in Afghanistan, he is ensuring that the bills are thoroughly looked through before they're passed through the House. Well, our, our congressional representatives are certainly engaged in this discussion and